Solve the quadratic equation by factoring. That is x squared minus 3x equaling to 18. Once again, that solve the quadratic equation by factoring. x squared minus 3x equaling to 18. So let's take a look at this problem, all right? And notice it specified a way to solve it, all right? There are many different ways. Those of you who are taking your Algebra 1 classes now and also in Algebra 2, you know you've got many ways you can solve a quadratic equation. You can graph it. You can factor it. You can do completing the square. Whew, you can do the quadratic formula. I get you started, all right? But today it's all about the factoring. It's all about factoring, all right? So let's see the story on x squared minus 3x equaling to 18. What do we do? When we factor, folks, we've got to set it equal to zero because that's the whole idea. To solve it is find the zeros, find the roots, if you will, of this quadratic equation. Now notice there's x squared, which tells me there are two solutions lurking out there for it, all right? There are two solutions. We're going to look for that. And the first thing we want to do is get it equal to zero. So let's go there. Let's go there. We'll subtract 18 from both sides. Now I'm putting that 18 under 3x, but be careful, my friends. Be careful. That gives us zero. You see what happens? And remember, addition property of equality, in this case, subtraction property of equality, all those properties of equality say if you do it to the left, you've got to do it to the right or vice versa. So in this case, we're subtracting from both sides. So it is the subtraction property of equality. Now, what does that do for us? Lots of good things. It makes x squared minus 3x minus our 18. Now notice I didn't make minus 15 or minus 21 or something of that nature. They're not like terms, dear friends, so don't do them. Don't do that to them, all right? You've got to keep them separated. You've got to keep them separated. You say, well, Ernie, what does that do for us now? These we're going to factor. We're going to factor, which means we want to come up with two binomials, binomial expressions here that will multiply to give us that value, all right? So the first thing I know that I have to have is x times x, because x times x will get me to x squared, all right? On the back end, I've got to have a negative 18. So I'm thinking about it. How can I get a negative 18? By the way, one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So let's go ahead and put that part of the problem or that answer in, in the situation, in our parentheses, if you will. So now I've got to think about 18. What are the factors of 18? Well, I could have, hmm, there's 3 times 6. There would be 2 times 9. There's also 1 times 18. All of those are options. However, only one of these, only one, is going to give me a negative 3 back in the middle. All right? And what I've got to do is figure out which way is this going to go. What I need, what I need, folks, is 2 that will add up to give me a negative 3. Now remember, these signs, one of them is positive, one is negative. So if I put a negative on that 6, and add those together, folks, I've got negative 3 for the middle, negative 3x. That's a good news. Now, over here, I could have had negative 2 or negative 9, but I'm not going to get that. I'm going to get a 7 or a positive 7 or a negative 7, depending on which one I choose. I could have also come up with positive 3 if I'd put the negative on the 3 and the positive on the 6. So it does matter where you put your signs and which number goes with the signs, all right? So let's take a look at how this is going to work out. I'm going for this one right here, and the negative is important to be on the 6, so we're going to say x minus 6, and we've got x plus our 3. Now, we're not done yet. We have factored, but now we've got to do the second part of this problem, which says solve it, solve it. So here we go. We've got x plus 3 equaling to 0, and down the other side, how about it? x minus 6 will equal 0, and we're going to test the waters. We're going to see, hmm, if we subtract 3 both sides... We have x equaling negative 3. That looks good. On this side, if we add 6, because it's a negative 6, so we're going to add that, we're going to have x equaling to positive 6. Now, you say, Ernie, are those the answers? <laughs> We've been waiting, haven't we? Those are the answers. Let's check them real quickly. If I put a negative 3 in here and square it, go back to the original. Don't play in between. Go back to the original, which is where you started from, all right? Put that negative 3 and square it. That gives me positive 9. And then a negative 3 times negative 3, well, it gives me another positive 9. And add those together, we get 18. So this guy is good. Checks out. Put a 6 in there. Let's see what happens. 6 squared is 36. Keep that in your head. Minus 3 times 6. Well, 3 times 6, dear friends, is, yep, 18. And minus 18 from 36, we get 18. They both check out. 
So again, we check by substituting our two solutions. Notice I said there'd be two, and we do have two of them, and both of them work well, all right? Both of them work well. So that's your approach using factorings. For more math help, visit tnlearn.org.